All right, folks, we're one week away now from the Democratic National Convention. That will kick off. We'll be there on Sunday in Chicago and throughout the week. And it's just three weeks since President Biden dropped out of this race and essentially disappeared from the election year landscape. And while the vice president has really been drinking in the relief response and having, you know, good success with polling and response, voters are waiting for some meat on the bones, according to uh, many of the news outlets and reporting. There's been no news conferences, no interviews yet. Here's the Washington Post editorial board. Quote, elections aren't just about winning. They're about accumulating political capital for a particular agenda, which Ms. Harris can't do unless she articulates one. That one's from the Washington Post. But a Democratic lawmaker tells Politico's playbook today, why would we start talking about policy? We're actually better off just running on this real wave of enthusiasm and energy. It's the best thing Harris can do, they say. She says that more details will come next week. When can we expect you to roll out your policy platform? Um, next week, and it'll be focused on the economy and what we need to do to bring down costs and also strengthen the economy. Okay, we're joined now by Lisa Booth, host of the Lisa Booth Podcast and a Fox News contributor, and Mark Penn, former Clinton advisor and pollster and CEO of Stagwell. Good to have both of you with us. Um, so these are the positions that she's going to be challenged on um, based on what she has said herself, Lisa and Mark. Let's watch it, these to start us off. We've got to critically re-examine ICE, probably think about starting from scratch. I am prepared to get rid of the filibuster to pass a Green New Deal. There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. Would you support changing the dietary guidelines? The, the, yes. To reduce red meat specifically? Yes, I would. We need to have Medicare for all. We have to have a buyback program, and I support a mandatory buyback program. So, Lisa, let me start with you. Um, she has essentially said through her campaign that she's reversed her opinion on a number of those things, including <laughs> fracking, mandatory buybacks. Her new ad shows her um, demonstrating that she's very tough on the border. Your thoughts on where this is going policy-wise? Yeah, you know, Martha, you mentioned she's running ads right now in Arizona and Nevada saying that she's tough on the border, despite the fact that she has called ICE, compared ICE to the KKK, called for abolishing ICE and has also been the borders are letting in over 10 million illegal aliens. But that's a challenge for former President Donald Trump. He's not just running against Kamala Harris. He's running against almost the entirety of the media, 99 percent of the media. And both Harris and her propagandists in the media are dead set on making this a substance free election. It's about vibes and about being happy and, and not about anything of substance. I mean, Martha, I've worked in politics for a long time. I've worked for Fox News for eight years. I have never seen a candidate not have a single issue on their campaign website, particularly running for the United States, president of the United States uh, of America. I, I mean, it, it's almost criminal. It's insane. So, Mark, um, I think she will be judged on her job as vice president. And, you know, especially in the light of the fact that it appears that Joe Biden, you know, was not fit to run again. He was pushed out by his own party based on that. They said that he couldn't he couldn't win. So I think one of the fair questions is, you know, what how much of of a hand did she have in running these things, because we do have, uh, we do have had 12 million people, by some estimates, at least 10 million cross the border on our watch. So those are fair questions, right? Yeah, look, there are a lot of questions that are, that are fair. What's her economic policy? Where is she on the border? Uh, what did she do as part of this administration? How does she separate herself from the administration? Uh, so far, good luck getting answers to any of those questions. Uh, I think the public is relieved that uh, Joe Biden has dropped out. They have an alternative to Trump. Uh, there, this, there is a kind of a, some people call it a sugar high, but there's a, it's as though she held the Democratic convention already. And so it'll be interesting to see if she gets any more mileage out of the Democratic uh, convention. And then the election is going to begin in earnest here. Where, where the Trump campaign is going to have to uh, get some salience out of the differences between their positions and hers. So, Lisa, you know, let's take a look at these battleground polls. These are the latest Siena, New York Times, and they're, they're sort of a flip-flop from what we saw prior to this where Trump was ahead. She's ahead, according to these, by four points in Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. What do you think about President Trump's response and how he has handled this new race that he is in? 
Well, it, it's challenging, Martha. I mean, look, we're, we're sort of in the fog of war, in a sense. I mean, we had an assassination a, a month ago, an mm -hmm. assassination attempt, a, a presidential candidate drop off or drop out via X, and then an entirely new Democrat ticket in, in the past month. So there's a lot of chaos with that. But you know, I think we need to see the, the former president get focused. I mean, he asked, he asked on X today, uh, you know, were you better off now than you were four years ago? And, and of course, the answer is no. And we know what Kamala Harris stands for, even though she doesn't want to admit the truth to the American people. She would just be a continuation of the same failed policies. More crime, more open borders, uh, you know, more inflation, more wars, more chaos, more of all of it. And, and if anything, it would be compounded because she's even further to the left than Joe Biden. But we need to see the former president day in and day out, every opportunity, giving press conferences, trying to change the narrative on his own, uh, telling the American people that story and the fact that we don't have to live like this. There is a better way. He's the better way. But he's got to stay disciplined in selling that to the American people. So he will speak, Mark. Quick thought on this to uh, Elon Musk tonight. Um, is that, a, you know, a venue that you think could potentially be helpful to him? And Musk and his PAC are really focused on driving out voters for the Republican side in the battleground states. Sure. I think it's going to be a, a, an interesting venue. I think Trump hasn't been able to get his message out. I think he's heard from, from every Republican uh, consultant and donor that he's been messing up out there for the last couple of weeks while, while she's been doing quite well. So it'll be a real opportunity for him to get through to maybe 50 million people. Wow. Okay. Uh, Mark and Lisa, thank you very much. Great to see you both. Thank you, Martha. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.